Thank you. It's good seeing you tonight. Deborah Juarez wants another term in the Seattle City Council's District 5 seat after what she sees as four years full of progress. I want to keep listening to what the people of Seattle and my district community needs. From the Northgate Pedestrian Bike Bridge, a new National Hockey League facility at Northgate, and two light rail stations coming to D5, Juarez says she's helped her district grow. So those are major projects that I started, that we got out of committee, that we got votes on, that we've worked hard on, and I want to finish all that. In the six-way August primary, Juarez earned more than 45% of the vote, the second highest percentage among the three incumbent council members running. Yes, we Ed. save the Arctic. Juarez, one of six children born to a Native American mother and first-generation Mexican-American father, is endorsed by the Civic Alliance for a Sound Economy, the political arm of the Seattle Chamber. MLK Labor and IAFF Local 27, the Seattle Firefighters Union. She says she's focused on a wide range of top issues. It's sheltering the unsheltered. It's getting up our housing stock. It's transportation. With regard to fundraising, Juarez has raised about $147,000 for her campaign as of early October, with about 54% of that coming from Seattle's publicly funded Democracy Voucher Program. This is actually pretty cool. Political action committees are playing a smaller role in D5 than in other races. With about $9,800 in expenditures as of late September, People for Seattle, the PAC led by former council member and mayor Tim Burgess, Case, and the Civic Alliance for a Progressive Economy are supporting the Juarez campaign. None are supporting her opponent, Ann Davison Sattler. I am the poster child for what district representation should be. Juarez says her work on major projects, like Seattle's new waterfront and a revamped Seattle Center, plus her work on local projects, like $18 million for the Lake City Community Center, are proof that she's listening. You take ideas from community, you do the plans, you raise the money, and you, you transcend that into actual brick and mortar. So for me, that's been exciting. If you want excitement... Hi, I'm Ann. I'm going to be on people's ballots for November. Ann Davison Sattler she's says she's bringing it. I have so much energy. There's been someone who commented about they should just plug the city into me and they could run for a while. Sattler came to Seattle to work for the Sonics in the 1990s and has a background in community events as a school fundraiser, coach, and tutor. She's an attorney and a married mother of two elementary age kids. Drop and give me 10 push-ups. Who've been helping her work out some issues on the campaign trail. I've watched Seattle change during my children's lifetime, and it's really been because of an unresponsive council. Sattler says she decided to run after trying, unsuccessfully, to reach Deborah Juarez about so-called safe injection sites, which Juarez supports and Sattler does not. And that started my road on researching this position and why my representative was out of touch for me. And I started uncovering that was the pattern, a pattern of neglect and unresponsiveness. Sattler received close to 27% of the vote in the six-person August primary the second highest amount for any candidate running against an incumbent this fall. She's endorsed by former NBA champ, part team owner, and general manager of the Sonics, Wally Walker, plus the director of UW Medicine's Addictions Division, psychiatry professor, Dr. Richard Rees, and the Seattle Times. That's great! On the fundraising front, Sattler has raised just over $51,000 for her campaign as of early October and is not using the Democracy Voucher Program. We see that there is a need, there is a vacuum of leadership, of positive leadership. Sattler says D5 needs a leader who responds more quickly to local concerns and says her top priorities include public safety, addiction prevention and recovery, and homelessness and housing. Specific to homelessness, Sattler says she'd bring a different, more fiscally-minded perspective to what she sees as a failed response from the city. The approach is not working, and if you were to look at it from a business perspective, you would not continue to do the same approach with just more money and more time to expect a different outcome. So the approach needs to be different because we are spending a lot of money for that, and we're not seeing any difference. Should D5 keep an incumbent council member who says she's getting results, or bring in a newcomer? promising better connection with constituents? The answer to that question is coming our way this November. I've delivered everything that I said I would. I'm running because I really want some change.